I have my Lefebvre set for about two months now, going on almost three months. We're gonna have the full 20.1 review coming up, but one thing that I've had a lot of questions about is the actual catch gloves between the 600 degree glove, 590, and the 580. There's a lot of differences between all the gloves, and I wanna break that down in this video, because looking online, there hasn't really been a lot of information that I've been able to find out there that really, really, truly broke down pros and cons and actually showed you the pros and cons. Today's video is gonna be a whole breakdown of that, Let's get into it. When I started gathering all my research, my information to compare all three of these gloves, the one thing that came to my mind first was I need to have this on a level playing field. I have to eliminate any biases or any variables. And the first one being comparing an E-Flex 4 600 glove to a Premier 4, a Reebok Premier 4 590 to a Lefebvre 20.1 580. Not really on a level playing field because they're all very different gloves from different time periods. And to be honest, they're quite old with some very big differences. All three of these gloves are all 20.1s. There's a 20.1 600, 20.1 590, 20.1 580. There's a big thing going on right now in the whole gold any world with double T versus single T. All three of these gloves have single T, so there's no biases. They all have the same lacing in the pocket. So now we're on a complete level playing field. These are the exact same gloves, everything top to bottom, with the exception of the actual catching angle itself. So now we can have a truly fair comparison. I wanna start things off with the 580. The 580 is the oldest glove on the entire market. The whole concept of the 580 was designed specifically for Patrick Waugh. Catching pucks up by the ear, down low. Guys that use the 580 include Braden Holpe, Sergey Bobrovsky, Mike Smith, Jordan Bennington, Jacob Marston, the list goes on. Even my personal friend, Jamie Phillips, who is a huge 580 advocate. You know or you know, like you pull the sword out, you're the chosen one, like you put on the glove, it's the chosen break. Typically with a 580 glove, really good for catching pucks. It's designed for catching pucks. I found myself as well. Great for just letting the puck go in the pocket and die. Anything that goes in dies, it doesn't pop out. Puck handling is a little bit different. I'll tell you right now, puck handling at the 580, I found was night and day different. I had to seriously get used to some of the differences and the changes of just how you grip a stick based on how the actual catch angle closes with the palm and then having to accommodate around the stick differently. Mike Smith, Braden Holpe, Jordan Bennington, arguably, and Sergey Bobrovsky, three to four of the top, if not the best puck handling goaltenders on the entire planet, all using a 580s. Next up is the 590. Now, this glove has been around since the original Reebok Premier One days. This glove is about 15 years old, give or take. It really kind of got into the Premier Series with the flat face pads. That's besides the point. It's a 60 degree catch angle, right? So the glove closes at a 60 degree catch. The 580 closes at a 90 degree. The 600 closes at a 75 degree. I'll get into the 600 in a second. But typically guys that use a 590 are fingers up position goaltenders. So for example, Pekka Rene, big fingers up guy, uses the 590. Jonathan Bernier, Carey Price, a lot of guys with fingers up position that are using the glove. Also guys like Connor Hellebuck, Corey Crawford. A lot of different guys, John Gibson included, he uses a two piece, which he's the one outlier for there. Everybody else uses a one piece. And the 590 is supposed to be the best puck handling glove on the market. Out of all three of these, the 590 is designed to grip that stick well and to be the best puck handler. Maybe not so much for catching, more so for blocking, but definitely for puck handling. The 600 glove is this myth that everybody seems to want to talk about, that it's this holier than thou, the holy grail of gloves. I think because when it came out, it was skinned on the Reebok Premier 4 line as a 605 blocker and a 600 glove that you couldn't get unless you played NCAA Division One pro hockey. I remember those days. I remember going to retail shops trying to get one. Obviously, I wasn't playing D1 or Major Junior or Pro, so I couldn't get one. I think that's why a lot of people wanted it. Also, Carey Price was the one that this was designed for. This is a clone, CCM clone list to be a Vaughn T5500 clone to get Carey Price out of Vaughn into CCM. And for a lot of Vaughn guys, it's a big thing to go from CCM. It's a 75 degree catch. The catch is more like a baseball glove with the whole palm. The 600, where it comes in, it's supposed to be a hybrid between the 580 and the 590. It catches pucks well with the 580, it's great for puck handling like the 590. I'll get into my opinions on this in a second. I beg to differ on a lot of those categories, but guys use the 600 glove. David Riddick, Casey DeSmith, Carter Hart, Marc-Andre Fleury, some of the flagship 600 glove users. Obviously, Carey Price switched to a 590. Now that we have all of our facts out of the way, we can begin the actual comparison here. The first comparison here is gonna be catching pucks. I came up with a test that cut out all the variables, all the biases, and just got right down to the straight cold hard facts. Take a look. We're gonna put a blindfold on my face, mask down. I'm gonna put my glove out. Mr. St. Vincent here is gonna shoot pucks into my glove and we're gonna see how many stick, how many don't stick. 580 is my personal favorite, but we'll get to that in a second. Thoughts, Mr. St. Vincent? See what happens.
I would personally like to vouch for the 580. I think we can both agree. Everything that was hitting the cup was going in. I think we went five and a half or seven. 600 didn't catch anything. It was literally a trampoline board. A blocker disguised as a glove. 590 caught one puck. Keep in mind it was basically right in the pocket. I'm gonna go ahead and see if you're not using a 580, you're an idiot if you're looking to catch pucks. That's a wrap, folks. I'm rid of the end of it, and that's all, folks. If you look at all the puck marks on my 580 glove, and I really hope that you can see it, every puck mark that's on here, it angles towards the pocket. And I think it's evident in that testing that anything that hits around the palm pocket area, and it dies, it doesn't come out. But then when you look at the 600 glove, there's nowhere near as many puck marks in the actual pocket palm area. In my opinion, I think the 600 glove is just a blocker disguised as a glove. Yes, you could argue that, hey, it's not the glove's fault, more so the user error. 590 though did shock me because it does, it's a single tee, but it's an offset tee. And I'm not a fan of the 590 to begin with. I never liked the 590 when I had a Premier 4 set. What I will say is I was shocked the pucks did go in here. Next big thing is weight and I was shocked because when I hold up the gloves, in my mind, I like to think the 580 is the heaviest glove and the 600 is the lightest. It's actually shocking because it's the opposite. The 600 glove is the heaviest glove here, followed by the 580. And followed by the 590. The 590 is the lightest out of all three. Obviously, a little bit different materials. If you look here, when I show you on the screen, the cuff here in the 600 is really, really, really thin, razor thin. Compare it to the 580, this thing is huge, really, really, really thick angle, just a girthy, girthy cuff. A lot more materials, big T as well. The T itself in the 600, way skinnier. So I thought for sure that the 600 was gonna be the lightest by far, but no, I was shocked. It is the heaviest glove out of all three. Puck handling is gonna be where a lot of people may disagree with me. The 600 is probably the all around best choice for puck handling. I found that despite the catching problems, whether I was saucing, whether I was shooting, tip to tip pass, on the ice, in the air, whatever the case may have been, I found the 600 was able to accommodate my glove positioning around the stick perfectly. I didn't have problems, I didn't have any wrist cramping, any other issues, everything was smooth, crisp, fluid. What I will say with the 580, I had to get used to using the 580. Now that I've been using it for almost two months, I'm accustomed to how to puck handle properly with the 580 and it's become a lot easier. What I would tell you is if I was using the 580 day one when I first got the equipment and tried to puck handle it, it was an absolute nightmare. I was having a hard time figuring out how to actually grasp the stick and get some power behind it because it's a whole different mechanic. Catching pucks and puck handle with the 580, you might as well not even be using a glove on this side of the planet because it's so different. Puck handling with the 590, just take a look at this. I literally gave up on the 590. It's supposed to be this great puck handling glove, this great cat. I, I, I hate the 590. I'm gonna put this out there. I'm biased. I hate the 590. To kind of wrap things up, if I was to make my ultimate glove, like my true ultimate hybrid of the 600, 590, 580, I love how thin and presentable the wrist here is in the 600. If, if you see right here, because the wrist cuff is so thin and the materials are kind of attached a little bit, it's really great for presenting my wrist. And I feel a lot of wrist mobility. I'm getting down low and whatnot. The problem with the 600 is the actual catching of the pucks, the actual catch angle, the pucks and that kind of stuff. So if you were able to take the cuff of the 600 and blend it with everything else of the pocket, everything of the 580, you'd have, I think in my opinion, the perfect glove. The one issue I do have with the 580, and now this is starting to get nitpicky, is that I think the T is a little bit too thick. I would love a thinner T. I asked the guys at Lefebvre, could we do a double T, take the one prong off so it's a single double T, that makes sense. Kind of like a Brian's anchor T style T. I would love that. I don't think they're gonna do that, but that would be my ideal perfect glove, 600 cuff, 580, everything else, skinning out the T, you have the ultimate glove, in my opinion. Concluding points. The number one glove, I'm probably not gonna shock any of you, the 580. This is gonna be my new favorite glove. It's been my favorite glove since I put my hand in it for the first time when I got my set. It's gonna be the glove that I use the remainder of the season for this upcoming season. It's gonna be my game glove. It makes catching easier. I'm catching pucks up here really easy. I'm scooping the pucks down low, which I used to have a really, really big problem with. Still do a little bit, but it makes things a lot easier. The 580 is the glove for me, and I wish I would've gotten into it sooner. I'm gonna put the 600 at number two, just based on the fact that it's a great puck handling glove. If we're talking about catching, this thing is dead last. Like the 600 does not even compete with the others, but just because of a puck handling perspective and how comfortable it is, how easy it is to puck handle, this is number two. And this travesty called the 590, it's not for me. Hey, a lot of guys love it, that's fine. It's it's different for everybody. I hold my glove a little bit different than a lot of guys. This video isn't to tell you because you're using the 600, you're wrong, because you're using the 580, you're right. It's just my personal two cents. I've tried to present some facts to you so that you can make an unbiased decision with the information I've given you and do with what you will after that. This includes this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Super passionate about this little fave stuff. This stuff has been great. Really been enjoying it. My three month review is coming up right around the corner. I'm gonna be posting very soon. If you wanna see more gear videos like this, subscribe to the channel, leave a like down below, and I'll see you in the next video.